Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study out of Harvard University has looked into coffee consumption and its ability for us to lose weight. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study has got to offer. So this is the review of a piece I read that was penned by Lauren Ball and Emily Birch that was published in The Conversation and it covers a study published by the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard T. Chan School of Public Health which looked into coffee consumption and its ability for humans to reduce weight gain. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Coffee is well recognised as having a positive impact on our long-term health. Drinking the equivalent of three or four cups of coffee a day reduces the risk of many health conditions, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and indeed some cancers. It's a fact that more than 450 million cups of coffee are consumed in the United States every single day. So it's no secret that coffee brings joy to people all over the world. It can definitely provide a boost in focus. It brings people together socially and also, not to mention, it tastes and smells absolutely wonderful. Now, a group of researchers have examined whether drinking an extra cup of coffee a day or adding sugar, cream or non-dairy alternatives resulted in more or less weight gain against those who didn't adjust their coffee intake at all. So what were the initial findings? Well, people who drank an extra cup of coffee a day gained 0.12 kilograms. And that's around 0.2 pounds less weight than expected over a four year period. Adding sugar resulted in a fraction more weight gain than expected over that four year period. And that fraction was 0.09 kilograms or only 32 ounces. The Harvard researchers then combined data from three large studies from the United States. They were two nurse health studies from 1986 to 2010 and a study from 1991 to 2015. And they also looked at a health professional follow-up study that took place between 1991 and 2014. The nurses' health studies are two of the largest cohort studies with more than 230,000 participants which investigates chronic disease risks for women. The health professional follow-up study involves more than 50,000 male health professionals and investigates the relationship between diet and also health outcomes. The participants in all three studies completed a baseline questionnaire and another questionnaire every four years to assess their food intake and also their drink intake. Using the combined data sets, the researchers analysed changes in coffee intake and changes in the participants' self-reported weight at four-year intervals. The average four-year weight gains for the nurses' studies for the first study was around 1.2 kilograms, that's about 2.6 pounds, and for the second study was 1.7 kilograms, and that's around 3.8 pounds, while participants in the health professional study gained on average around 0.8 kilograms, and that's around 1.8 pounds. The researchers also found that increasing unsweetened, caffeinated or decaffeinated coffee intake by one cup a day was associated with weight gain that was 0.12 kilograms. That's around 0.2 pounds less than was expected over the four years. Interestingly, adding creamer, milk or a non-dairy alternative did not significantly affect this weight change. However, adding sugar, just one teaspoon a day to coffee was associated with a weight gain that was 0.9 kilograms, just under two pounds more that was expected over the four years. Now, the authors say this study is unique in two ways in that it had a very large sample size and the participants were followed for many years. They say this adds confidence that the associations were real and can likely be applied to other populations. In my humble opinion, yes, there were a lot of people, but they were only questioned every four years, which means you're asking them to remember what they were doing three and four years ago, which in my humble opinion means that the data is not really that reliable. Having said that, the authors do say there are three other reasons to be cautious. First, the findings represent an association and not causation. This means the study does not prove that coffee intake is the true or real reason for that changing weight. Rather, it shows the two changes were observed together over a certain period of time. Second, the findings around weight gain were indeed very modest. The average four-year weight gain, which was averted, 
based on one cup of coffee was 0.12 kilograms, which is around 30 grams per year. That's only one ounce. The authors go on to say that this amount may not be meaningful for most people who are looking to manage their weight and using coffee to do it. I'd say the author's use of the phrase may not be meaningful is a massive understatement. And finally, the authors say this analysis did not consider the variability in the amount of caffeine that was actually in the coffee. It just assumed a standard amount of caffeine per cup, which I think is a huge mistake. And if I were overseeing this analysis, I think this key indicator has to be one that would render, in my humble opinion, most of the data insignificant. As we know, caffeine is a natural stimulant, which has been shown to temporarily reduce appetite and increase alertness. This may help us to feel less hungry for a short period of time, and this could then potentially lead to a reduced energy and even a reduced calorie intake. Some people consume coffee before exercising as a stimulant to improve their workout performance. If a workout is more effective, more energy may well be expended. However, the benefit is largely thought to be short-lived. Caffeine has also been shown to speed up our metabolism, causing more energy to be burned while we are at rest. However, this effect is relatively small and not suitable as a substitute for regular physical activity and indeed a healthy, balanced diet. Another consideration is that caffeine has a mild diuretic effect, which means it can lead to some water weight loss. This is water loss and not fat loss, and the weight is quickly regained once you rehydrate. If you are pregnant or breastfeeding, it's important that you talk to your doctor before increasing any caffeine intake because caffeine can be passed on to your growing baby. And if you need specific weight guidance advice, please talk to a medical practitioner or visit an accredited dietitian. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative. Hopefully both. I've made some notes. I know you've got to do the study to get the data, but there's also thinking ahead, critically thinking, is this going to give us anything? Um, I think this study was a massive waste of time and probably a massive waste of the university's money. Um, there have been many studies to date. I've covered 10 so far that talk about the benefits of drinking coffee with regard to health. Um, most of them say drinking two to three cups a day gives you the maximum health benefits. Let me know, do you drink coffee for the taste or do you do it now for the health benefits or indeed is it both? And I'd be interested to see what you think about Harvard studies. This one, I think, is pretty much a waste of time. I read one recently that was highlighted or headlined, red meat causes cancer. But when you read into the questions that they asked, they would say, do you eat red meat? And this includes meat, processed meat that is in a sandwich and also things like lasagna, which is packed with carbohydrates in the form of pasta. So let me know what you think of this study and also let me know what you think of the recent couple of studies that have come out of Harvard University. I'd be interested to see what you think.